Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John, and today I have another anniversary uh, edition for you. It is a uh, Skid Row's Slave to the Grind celebrating its 30th anniversary. But before I begin, if you uh, haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings, and more. So, my original plan was to do uh, Alice Cooper's Hey Stupid, but I went to the record store today and I wanted to pick up the CD, but they were out. So I ended up ordering the vinyl, but that's not going to be in for maybe another week or two. So I'm going to hold off on that review. But today I want to do uh, talk about Skid Row. So this uh, came out on June 11th, 1991, celebrating its 30th anniversary. I'm like a little late, but at least I'm getting it done in a month. And this is their second studio album. And this one is um, a lot heavier than the first one. And I'll be talking about that you know, throughout the video. This is also the first uh, heavy metal album to uh, debut at number one in that like Nielsen sound scan era. They kind of like changed the rules for like you know Billboard and all that. You know, actually the first uh, number first uh, heavy metal album to reach number one was uh, Quiet Right in 1983. But this one debuted at number one, and like I said, it's a lot heavier than their debut. They introduced some elements of like speed metal, to some punk rock. And there are like three power ballads, which we'll talk about. Lyrically, they talk about topics like um, authority, uh, politics, drugs, and organized religion. It has the same lineup as the first album, uh, Sebastian Bach on vocals, uh, Dave the Snake Savo on guitar, Scott Hill on guitar, Rachel Bolin on bass, and Rob Afuso on drums. This was produced by Michael Wagner. He was known for many uh, hard rock and metal acts in the 80s. Now the cover art is um, was done by Sebastian Bach's father, David Birk, and it's basically like a medieval era painting. Um, and it has like, if you look closely, it has some modern gadgets. And I'm going to be like doing a cutaway right now. So um, here's the album cover, but we're going to look at it closely. So let's take a look. Okay, we're going to take a look at the artwork and the CD. So here's a CD showing all five members. I have to flash on my camera. Hopefully it doesn't glare too much, but I'm going to move this to the side. And let's take a look at the artwork. So it's basically like a medieval painting, but you're going to see like lots of elements of, um, you know, like, like modern art. You know, the things that are in like modern day things going on here. So if you look... At the uh, corner over there, it's supposedly supposed to be um, JFK. And we have different things. We have like somebody that looks like he's holding a TV. There's like an angry mob over there. Here's the front cover. It's like two guys like digging a grave. They're about to like throw this person in. It looks like they're like going to dump him in. Pretty gruesome cover. Pretty cool. You have some people like dressed in suits. And uh, over here, a woman looks like a prostitute there. And basically like an angry mob and like a kind of like a, a landscape in the background so this is definitely like a, a pretty cool cover it's really great when you open it up so let me zoom back okay let's let's talk about it again so basically the cd here this is the original cd i bought when it came out this is the explicit version there's a a clean version and the difference is there's like one song so on the explicit version there's a song called get the fuck out and on a clean version i think there's a song called beggar's banquet i don't have that one so I'll be talking about the explicit one today. And uh, also to note that uh, Skid Row did open for Guns N' Roses. And I will be mentioning Guns N' Roses a lot like throughout this video because I do believe that they fall into that same category as like Guns N' Roses. You know, they were kind of thought of as like a hair metal band. But if you listen to bands like Bon Jovi and Warrant, and I was just talking about them in a previous video, those are like completely different bands. Like. This is more of like a heavier, kind of like a sleaze metal or a sleaze rock or I don't know what you want to call it. They were kind of called hair metal at the time, but they are a different breed. They have a sound more like that, like Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. So I will be referencing that, you know, throughout this video. So the song starts out with uh, Monkey Business. This was also the lead single. I remember explicitly, um, you know, when this came out, it was released on MTV and it starts out with like a clean... Um, Guitar, it's kind of like a blues based intro riff, and I'm thinking that's pretty cool. You know, it sounds like Skid Row. Then that, like, that riff hits, and it just 
you immediately notice like it's just like this is like a heavier album you know you notice they change their sound you know the drums do sound good they do have that kind of like GNR sound they use like the cowbell a lot but the vocals are a little heavier this is just a very fast paced song and you immediately know this is going to be a heavier album next song is the title track Slave to the Grind this is one of the heaviest or maybe the heaviest song in the album has a galloping riff is like borderline like speed metal Vocals are like a little lower, a little more aggressive, but the chorus is very memorable. Uses lots of power chords. The next song is called The Threat. This is a heavy uh, blues based uh, song. This one reminds me of that like Appetite Era GNR. Good use of like backing vocals in the chorus. Good like politically uh, themed lyrics and it's just a heavy uh, rocking song. Next is Quicksand Jesus. This is the first uh, power ballad of the album. Some clean guitar, some bass, some clean singing, has some uh, religious uh, themed lyrics, and it is a power ballad with like a soft verse and heavy chorus. So next is uh, Psycho Love. This is uh, another one of those like uh, sleaze metal with like a little bit of a, like a funk vibe, has some heavy guitars, the vocals are like a little higher. This one again reminds me of that GNR, that Appetite Era GNR. There's like a softer melodic breakdown, so I really like that part of the song and it comes in the middle. Next is the song, uh, Get the Fuck Out. This is a straightforward sleaze metal. You do hear that GNR influence again. Fast moving songs, just heavy guitars. You know, the drums do sound like classic skid row. They use the cowbell a lot and another good song. Next, Living on a Chain Gang. This starts out with like some isolated vocals. You know, Sebastian vocals are a little more aggressive on this track. Lots of backing vocals on the song and the lyrical themes are like very political. Next song is called Creep Show. So this is another good one. Just a mid paced rocker, some heavy guitars, got that classic sound. You know, just another one of those like sleaze metal sounds. Vocals are very good. Next is In a Darkened Room. This is the second power ballad and this one starts out with like a slow electric guitar solo. Really great like vocal performance. You know, the lyrical content is very deep. It deals with uh, topics like love and faith. And this is probably like the best ballad on, on the album. I, I like this one a lot. I really like the intro solo. Next is Riot Act. And this is a completely different type of song. It's just straightforward punk rock. It kind of like sounds like the Ramones, but like a little heavier, a little faster. And um, they actually do cover a Ramon song on uh, their an EP that they did. And I will be talking about that at the end as a little bonus, so you can stick around for that. This is just another fast-paced song, heavy guitars. Next one called uh, Mud Kicker. This is one of the heavier songs, a little more reminiscent of like Judas Priest, maybe in that like painkiller era. I mean, this is like that level of like heaviness, heavy riffs, more like traditional heavy metal. And this is not like a fast-paced song, just. Everything's just kicked up a notch and really great song. Last song, the, the album uh, closes with Wasted Time. And this is the third power ballad and the last song. More of like a traditional power ballad, similar to like the ones released by other metal bands. I know this one I think was released on a single. There was a video for it, but I think they were kind of going for the radio hit in this one, but still very good. You know, it has a clean verse, heavy chorus, memorable guitar solo and bass sounds very good so in conclusion you know skid row like i said in the beginning of the video you know they were lumped together with that hair metal but they were a different breed you know they did have that like a little heavier sound a little like a dirtier sound and this was a really good band this could be their best album you know i know they did another one subhuman race which i haven't actually listened to and they did a few more albums like without sebastian bach but I don't know, this is a, a 9 out of 10 album, Even could even be 10 out of 10, but I'll go with a 9 out of 10. Really great album, really great album to revisit. You know, definitely check it out if you don't have it. Please uh, stick around, so I'm going to do a little uh, bonus review next. Okay, welcome to the bonus review. So, I'm going to be talking about an album called uh, Besides Ourselves. This was an EP by Skid Row. And I remember I had the cassette, I don't have it anymore. And it's a short... EP, um, 18 minutes long. It had like the same uh, tracks on each side of the cassette. And I really like this one a lot. It just has uh, basically uh, five cover songs, you know, from, you know, metal bands. Uh, well, let me just talk about the songs. <laughs> so the first one is uh, Psychotherapy by the Ramones. Um, 
really great cover of that and has a Team Me Down from Faster Pussycat on this track. I like this one a lot. Next was a Kiss song called Come On and Love Me. And this was from the Dress to Kill album, a really uh, good representation of that song. Next is Delivering the Goods. This is a Judas Priest song and they play this live and I guess they were touring with Judas Priest because uh, Rob Halford does a guest on this uh, song. So this is another really good one. Next is What You're Doing. This is a song by Rush from their 1974 debut. Another really good song. And the last one is like my favorite. It's a Little Wing by uh, the Jimi Hendrix cover. And I really like this song. The guitars sound like really awesome on this one. And Sebastian Bach's voice, really perfect for this song. This is like one of those songs I've, I've like tried to play it on my guitar. I've like never been able to perfect it. It's kind of like hard to play, but you know, it's Jimmy. So it's that, but I really love this song. One of my favorite Hendrix songs of all time. So that's it. That's my mini review. So thanks for watching and uh, coming up next. Well, actually I, I uh, picked up some new uh, CDs and another vinyl yesterday so i will be doing another uh, collection update tomorrow and uh, the other uh, anniversary reviews i will be putting off till uh, probably next week some new releases i know there's a new uh, at the gates album coming this week and i'll probably do that and i'll see what else comes out this weekend um, so thanks for watching check out the in video links and i'll see you in the next one